Welcome to Sprint Vector. You have been selected to compete in the galaxy's greatest sporting event. To ensure no muscle, nerve, or brain damage has occurred outside the acceptable range, please follow the instructions on the screen in front of you. Congratulations! We have successfully calibrated your biometrics to our systems. If you feel that your arm length is incorrect, hit the recalibrate button on your left. Now that you've been calibrated, it's time to go over the basic movement controls. Put your hand, or whatever appendage your species may have in place of hands, into the glowing area in front of you. Now, swing your arm downwards past the area at your side, following the indicated arc. If you can't reach the hologram, look to your left to hit the recalibrate button. Now try it again with your left hand in one continuous motion. Excellent! It appears you have recovered from the nerve damage inflicted by the subjugation drones faster than anticipated. Alright, now we're going to add buttons to the process. Put your hand into the glowing area in front of you once more, but this time, hold down the trigger button. Great work! Now, swing your arm down like you did before, and let go of the trigger as your hand passes your hand. Once your hand is in position, squeeze and hold the trigger button on the correct hand. Now, try it again with your left hand in one continuous motion. Congratulations, you appear to be in functional condition. You are now ready to race in the galaxy's greatest sporting event. Prepare yourself for Sprint Vector. Don't worry, no one's saying anything bad about you for wanting to practice. 
Welcome to Sprint Vector. Before you start racing at top speeds, we'll first need to calibrate our system to match your range of motion. Please follow the instructions on the screen in front of you. All right, if you ever need to adjust these settings, hit that recalibrate button to your left. Now that we're calibrated, it's time to go over the basic controls. This is the trigger button. It will be used for many different actions in Sprint Vector. Go ahead and press the trigger three times with your index finger. Fantastic! In Sprint Vector, we call the A and X buttons the jump buttons. Press the jump button three times with either thumb. Good! These are the grip buttons. While racing, be careful not to accidentally clench these buttons in the heat of the moment. Using your middle fingers, press down on the grip buttons three times. Sweet! This is the menu button. Hold this button to open the menu any time outside of this tutorial. For now, press the menu button three times. Cool! This is the joystick. You can press the joystick left, right, or back to quick turn in place. Quick turning allows you to turn in place without turning your body. Quick turn two times, and when you're done, face the screen in front of you. Let's go over the basic action used to play Sprint Vector. We call this action your stride. Your stride will be used throughout Sprint Vector to move you forward like you were sprinting. With good form, you can move faster with less effort. First, we'll show you the basic motion. Put your hand in the glowing area in front of you. Now, swing your arm downwards past the area at your side. Excellent! Now try it again with your left hand in one continuous motion. Nice job! Next, we'll add buttons to the mix. Put your hand in the glowing area in front of you, but this time, hold... Good work! Now swing your arm down like before and let go of the trigger as your hand passes your hip. Nice work! Now, try it again with your left hand in one continuous motion. Awesome! Great! Now that you have the motion and timing down, we just need to add speed. The more effort you put into your stride, the more speed you'll get in return. Repeat the same motion you did earlier, but make sure to release the trigger past your hip mid-swing. Try to reach the speed marked on the speedometer in front of you using your right hand. Fantastic! Now try it faster. Reach at least the medium speed marked on the speedometer using your left hand. Make sure you're releasing mid-swing past your hip. Nice job! Great! In Sprint Factor, you can reach maximum speed shown on that speedometer with one swing of your arm. Remember that your stride will be used all the time in Sprint Vector. By maintaining good form, you can go much faster for significantly less effort. And trust me, you'll need that extra energy to pull off all the sweet stunts you can see in this video. Let's get you moving. To skate, apply the stride motion you learned earlier. First, raise your hand out in front of you and hold the trigger button. Next, swing your arm down and release the trigger button mid-swing past your hip. Excellent! Now that you can skate, you should be able to make it to the end of any racetrack. While skating, the more effort you put into sprinting, the faster you'll go. As you go faster, you'll start to see lightning form around your vision. To make it past these gaps, you'll need to be going pretty fast. Use the speedometer under this video to check your speed. Once you start to go fast, great job! You might have noticed that you also have a personal speedometer attached to you. Use it to gauge your speed while sprinting. Turning is simple. Just sprint in the direction you are looking. Turn your upper body to face the direction you want to go. The faster you go, the more control you'll have when turning. The finish line is right around the corner. You can make it! Turn yourself awesome! Now you can turn and follow the curves of our tracks. To brake, just hold down both grip buttons and you'll come to a stop. Try using the brakes to stop yourself from running off this ledge. 
Braking allows you to control how you want to race by giving you the ability to regulate your speed while running and falling. Next up, let's go over the basic motion used for jumping. Jumping in Sprint Vector is a lot like launching yourself off the ground with your hands. With good form, you can jump higher and further with minimal effort. Put your hand in the glowing area in front of you and hold down the jump button. Good work. Now swing your arm, following the arrow down, and let go of the jump button as your hand reaches the bottom. Good. Now, try it again with your left hand in one continuous motion. Sweet. You can also jump using both hands. Excellent. Now that you got the motion down, let's unlock movement and try it for real. Try jumping around in place three times with each. Nice work. Great. Now you're ready to try some obstacles. Let's get you jumping. You will need to apply everything you just learned to jump over these hurdles. You can jump twice. Give it a try. You made it. Congratulations. Now you can jump over obstacles along your way, even while moving at top speeds. During a race, you can jump across vast gaps after gaining some momentum from sprinting first. While your momentum carries you forward, you can jump at any point, even if you're already falling. Try running and then jumping to make it across these gaps. Now that you know how to jump while running, you will be able to soar through the racetrack and avoid obstacles easily. Now that you know the basics, let's put you to the test. Make it to the end of the track. Cool. Fantastic. Awesome. Good. You made it. Now that you've finished learning the basics, you're ready to take on the first race course. If you want to learn more mechanics, try the intermediate tutorial. Let's learn some intermediate skills. While in air, you can fly by extending both arms forward and holding down the trigger buttons on both hands. Just like you're a superhero. You can't jump here, so you gotta soar to reach the finish line. Try and make it to that cliff above you by flying. You made it across. With flying, you can make much further gaps than you normally would by just falling. Remember, you can fly whenever you want. You don't need a boost. While flying, you can turn by simply twisting your arms, kind of like steering a car. Point your head and hands in the direction you want to go. Try to make it to the end by steering around these walls. Now that you know how to turn midair, you can better control yourself along a racetrack when flying. To climb up a wall, simply pull yourself up by grabbing the green handles. To grab a handle, Hold the trigger button over the handle, and your hand will snap to the nearest grabbable object. You can't jump here. Try and climb to the top of these walls. Pull yourself up by grabbing handle to handle. To snap to a handle, simply hold the trigger button. Good job! Now you can scale up climbable walls. You can also fling yourself up a wall to climb faster. To fling yourself, first grab a handle with the trigger button, hold it above your head, and then throw it straight down to the floor. Release the trigger button on the way down. You can't slow climb these. Make it up the walls by flinging yourself upwards. Fantastic! Now you can quickly scale up climbable walls by flinging yourself ahead of the competition. Double tap the trigger button to shoot your glove blast and blow things out of the way. Glove blast the target to open up the path. You can disable mines by hitting them with a well-placed glove blast. The glove blast can be used not only to interact with the environment, but also to defend yourself from others. 
While racing, you can also grab power-ups to augment your vector gloves. Smash through a power ball and double tap the trigger to activate your new ability. Use Nitro to boost your way across this gap. While Nitro is active, you don't need to keep sprinting. Use it to take the lead with minimum effort. Now that you understand these new mechanics, let's put you to the test. Use what you just learned to make it to the end of the track. Nice work. Fantastic. Nice job. Good. Great. Now that you completed these tutorials, you're ready to tackle beginner and intermediate race courses. Or, you can come back and try the advanced tutorial if you want to master Sprint Vector. Okay, now let's get to the advanced stuff. You might have noticed these green ribbons earlier in the climbing tutorial. These are called Grip Streams. You can grab anywhere on a Grip Stream by holding the trigger button over it. Once you grab on, it will carry you along its path. Use these grip streams to reach the... Any momentum you have before grabbing onto the grip stream will be kept during the ride. For this grip stream, you'll want to fling yourself across its length, just like you did in the climb and fling tutorial. To fling yourself, grab anywhere on the grip stream, throw your arm back, and release the trigger button mid-swing. Fling yourself along this grip stream to reach the ledge above. You'll need to fling yourself multiple times before you reach the end to gain enough speed. Just like climbing, flinging is always much faster and easier than simply holding on to the grip string. The air brake allows you to slam towards the ground. Breaking midair is just like braking on the ground. Just hold down both grip buttons to plummet downwards. Brake while airborne to stop yourself from falling into the pit. You won't be able to fly here. Use the air brake to drop your way down to the floor. Integrating the air brake into your races will allow you to reduce the amount of hang time left over from flying or falling. In addition, you can combine flying with air brake to keep forward momentum while dropping. Drifting allows you to turn in place without moving your body. While skating, hold both the trigger and jump buttons down on one hand to drift in that direction. Drift this corner with your right hand to avoid falling into the pit. Nice! Additionally, you can sprint with your other hand while drifting to build more speed. You can pull your drift hand closer or further from your body to drift tighter or wider curves respectively. Drift around this corner with your left hand by pulling your drift hand close to your body. Drifting with your left hand will turn drift around this wider corner with your right hand by pushing your drift hand further from your body. Nice! By pulling your drift hand closer or pushing it further from your... Remember to drift... Great! Now that you understand these advanced mechanics, it's time to put you to the test. Make it to the end of the track. Nice job! Sweet! Fantastic. Good. Congratulations on finishing the tutorials. Now you should know everything you need to race on any racetrack. If you want to know more about power-ups, feel free to try them out in the power-up playground. If you ever need to practice or to refresh your skills, feel free to play any of the tutorials again. During races, you can smash through power balls to get power-ups that augment your vector gloves. When you get a power-up, double tap the trigger button to use it. This area is a playground where you can test various power-ups on yourself. Go ahead and try out all the power-ups. When you'd like to leave, skate over to the exit behind you.
The lag mine will create an area that slows down anyone inside it. Don't worry, you can't be slowed down by your own minds in a race. The compressor mine is a high gravity field that makes turning difficult and does incremental damage to anyone inside its radius. Place compressor mines next to hazards or big drops to create deadly traps to punish your opponent. The prox mine lies in wait until another racer enters the bubble, triggering an explosion. The explosion knocks back all nearby racers and disables their locomotion for a short time. The impulse shot will fire a projectile that grows larger the further it travels. On impact, it will explode, knocking back all racers. Use it to disrupt opposing racers, or fire it at your feet and ride the blast wave. The crash missile disables the locomotion of a racer. If you can hit someone with one, they won't be able to skate, jump. The Hornet Barrage fires off three missiles that will lock on and chase opponents down. Each successful hit makes it more difficult for a racer to build and maintain speed for a short duration. Chrono Shift will warp you to the last checkpoint that the closest racer in front of you has reached. Use it to catch up to the rest of the pack when you're really far behind. Nitro will boost you to extreme speeds. Double tap to activate, then hold the trigger button to boost your speed. While Nitro is active, you don't need to keep sprinting. Use it to take a break without... The Prox Mine lies in wait until another racer enters the bubble, triggering an explosion. The explosion knocks back all nearby racers and disables The compressor mine is a high gravity field that makes turning difficult and does incremental damage to anyone inside its radius. Play Chrono Shift will warp you to the last. Overdrive will remove the limits on your speed. Double tap the trigger to activate and then start skating with all your might. The Prox Mine lies in wait until another racer enters the bubble, triggering an explosion. The Hornet Barrage fires off three missiles that will lock on and chase opponents down. Each successful hit makes it more difficult for a racer to build and maintain speed. If you want to play around more later, you can come back here anytime to try out all of the different power-ups. During races, you can smash through power balls to get power-ups that augment your vector gloves. When you get a power-up, double tap the trigger button to use it. This area is a playground where you can test various power-ups on yourself. Go ahead and try out all the power-ups. When you'd like to leave, skate over to the exit behind you. The lag mine will create an area that slows down anyone inside it. Don't worry, you can't be slowed down by your own minds in a race. The compressor mine is a high gravity field that makes turning difficult and does incremental damage to anyone inside its radius. Place compressor mines next to hazards or big drops to create deadly traps to punish your opponent. The prox mine lies in wait until another racer enters the bubble, triggering an explosion. The explosion knocks back all nearby racers and disables their locomotion for a short time. Pulse shot will fire a projectile that grows larger the further it travels. On impact, it will explode, knocking back all racers. Use it to disrupt opposing racers or fire it at your feet and ride the blast wave.
The crash missile disables the locomotion of a racer. If you can hit someone with one, they won't be able to skate, jump, or fly until it wears off. The Hornet Barrage fires off three missiles that will lock on and chase opponents down. Each successful hit makes it more difficult for a racer to build and maintain speed for a short duration. Chrono Shift will warp you to the last checkpoint that the closest racer in front of you has reached. Use it to catch up to the rest of the pack when you're really far behind. Nitro will boost you to extreme speeds. Double tap to activate, then hold the trigger button to boost your speed. While Nitro is active, you don't need to keep sprinting. Use it to take a break without losing speed. Overdrive will remove the limits on your speed. Double tap the trigger to activate, and then start skating with all your might. If you want to play around more later, you can come back here anytime to try out all of the different power-ups. 